Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we will talk about vasculitis. These diseases are characterized by inflammatory processes happening in the blood vessels. The affected blood vessels can be arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules and veins. This inflammation leads to ischemia, so under perfusion of the tissues that this blood vessel supplies. Vasculitis can be of primary origin, then it is usually idiopathic, but those diseases are thought to be linked to rheumatic diseases. Or it can be due to an ongoing disease, as for example a hepatitis B infection or autoimmune diseases. The classification of vasculitis is done by the size of the blood vessels that are affected. The vasculitis of the large vessels we count arteritis temporalis and Takayasu arteritis. Arteritis temporalis is an autoimmune disorder which, as the name suggests, affects usually the arteria temporalis. It is associated with Polymyalgia rheumatica, as they both belong to the group of giant cell arteritis. Symptoms of this disease include pulsating headache, pain in the musculus masseter and disorders in vision, as also the vessels of the eye can be affected. Takayasu arteritis is a systemic granulomatous vasculitis, which mainly affects the aorta and the branching of large arteries, it is a rare disorder, also in the group of autoimmune disorders. It has a peak appearance in China, India, Thailand, Africa and South America and affects primarily women. In this disease, granulomas are formed in the walls of the elastic blood vessels, which leads to scar tissue formation which decreases the size of the lumen. The primary symptoms are rather general, as fever, fatigue, myalgias and arthralgias, and weight loss. With progression of the occlusion of the vessels, also syncopes, a diminished pulse in the arteria brachialis, pain in the limbs, blood pressure difference, in the arms and other similar symptoms can occur. Types of middle-sized vessel vasculitis are panarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki syndrome. If you want to know more about panarthritis nodosa or the collagenosis in general, you can see my series on collagenosis. The Kawasaki syndrome is also called mucocutaneus lymph node syndrome and is a type of necrotizing vasculitis. It affects mostly children and can lead to life-threatening cardiac complications. Most commonly affected by ischemia are the skin, peripheral nerves, muscles, joints and the GI tract. The etiology is unclear until today, but is thought to be due to aerosols of mycotoxins that are originating from the agriculture and are carried with the wind over far distances. Patients present with generalized swelling of lymph nodes, exanthemas and enanemas, and unresponsiveness of high fever to antibiotic. Vasculitis of the small vessels is a larger group. Here diseases as henoch schönlein purpura, Wegener granulomatosis, Schwerk-Strauss vasculitis and leukocytoclastic vasculitis are members of the group. henoch schönlein purpura is also known as anaphylactoid purpura or purpura rheumatica. It is a type IgA vasculitis which is presenting with hemorrhages in the skin mucous membranes, GI tract and kidneys. In this disorder, antigen-antibody complexes are depositioned in the walls of the blood vessels. 
This occurs especially after infections with beta hemolysing streptococci, but also in other infection, infections and due to different medications to which the body develops an immune reaction. In various organs, the petechiae lead to symptoms as bloody diarrhea if they are in the GI tract, hematuria if they are found in the kidneys, and edema if it occurs in the joints. Vegana granulomatosis is also called granulomatosis with polyangitis. It is a rheumatic disease that presents with granulomatous changes in the airways and middle-sized and small blood vessels. The causative agent for the development of this disease is unclear, but it is thought to be associated with a chronic infection with Staphylococcus aureus. The next type of small vessel vasculitis is the Schurk-Strauss vasculitis, also called eosinophil granulomatous polyangiitis. The etiology is not completely understood, but it is thought to be associated to damage of blood vessel walls by immunoglobulins of type E. The disease manifests itself with symptoms of the airways. That's why an overreaction to inhaled particles is thought to be the causative agent and causing an immune complex reaction. Schurk-Strauss vasculitis together with Wegener granulomatosis and microscopic polyangitis are counted together to the group of primary systemic vasculitis and are also all associated with anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, short ANCA. Patients usually present with chronic diseases of the respiratory tract as rhinitis, sinusitis or asthma and also in the nose, polyps are found often. Later in the disease progression, high levels of eosinophils are found in the blood and tissues. All organ systems can be affected by the disease, which can lead to symptoms of petechiae, diarrhea, tachyarrhythmia and many others. The last type is the leukoclastic vasculitis. It describes the damage of small blood vessels by leukocytes. The exact etiology is also here unknown, but it is thought to have some association with immune complexes and autoantibodies. In microscopic examinations, infiltration of arterioles and venules with neutrophilic granulocytes can be seen that leads to the development of fibrinoid necrosis. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, we would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much.